Hello everyone and welcome to the Daily Macro Review. I am your host, The Cowboy. This is Elliot Wave Cafe. Let's get started. All right, so this video is for both the YouTube channel, so it's a public video as well as a private video, if I can call them that today for the members in the pro room where we do this every single day, but today we'll, we'll share it with everybody. And uh, welcome to uh, the channel in here and uh, to our macro review analysis. I try to do a macro cafe every single Saturday and then maybe once a week in the middle of the week, we can kind of revisit some of the things that we're watching. But if you are new to the channel and you haven't been around yet to see our work, uh, you can find me up here on Elliot Cafe on Twitter. Go ahead and follow me up here. You will uh, find, you know, different um, posts and interesting commentaries, I guess, uh, um, you know, from, from different markets and kind of what I'm doing uh, intraday back in here. We're getting, uh, you know, quite a few, um, you know, just kind of back and forth uh, um, discussions in, in, um, in a bunch of markets. Also, um, you know, if you haven't subscribed yet to my free newsletter in here. It's called the Pigeon and the Statue. Um, you know, go ahead and give that a try. I have now a daily drip where I do uh, market updates every single morning. You know, I wake up at about five o'clock and I start writing this stuff till about seven. Um, and I put that up for you guys as well. So it's the Pigeon and the Statue is the daily drip. And there is also a strong pigeon report that I do every single week at the end of the week, either Saturday or Sunday, where I basically run you through, um, you know, kind of what happened this, the past week, what I'm seeing that's about to happen next week, where the strongest markets are, uh, from US equities to the ETFs, basic macro list, uh, Bitcoin commodities and everything else uh, with performances and mini charts that I kind of make commentary on. And, and I try to bring, uh, you know, decent information out of there. Again, the daily drip in here it's also just a shorter term look i vary I, I i vary between the daily charts and two hour charts and, um, and i'll walk you through this a little bit later here uh, after we're taking a look at the markets as well so if you haven't subscribed to this go ahead and give that a try it will show up in your mailbox every single morning and i usually kind of post it up on twitter as well you can also find me in the in telegram this is the uh, um, you know the private trading room that i run my pro channel um, and you can take a 30 day trial in here. We do a whole lot more, uh, uh things in here besides a chat room and, you know, Bitcoin channel, altcoins, uh, daily videos, uh, updates on charts and trades, live alerts and stuff like that. Again, it's a one month free trial. Uh, you don't have to pay. You you have to put your credit card because otherwise they wouldn't take you. But, um, you know, you can cancel any time prior to 30 days if you don't want to be in there. Uh, but I think you'll find, you know, a benefit, uh, being part of this room. So go ahead and give that a try. All right. So let's uh, jump over and take a look at, um, the markets in here. So I'm going to take a look at the members dashboard and uh, on stock charts and you can see that uh, you know the market was pretty flat on the Dow it was just about 11 basis points it was down throughout the day but then late in the day we started to accelerate here after one o'clock and uh, you know we had uh, decent gains coming coming up into all the markets um, there was some decent buying so in the morning uh, you know you have a little bit of a weakness um, you know and just kind of people uh, doing all kind of things in here now you have zero uh, you know um, um, zero expiration right on 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 those options so there's a lot of volatility in the markets but you know we came back really nicely in here in the s p 500 as well so we opened much weaker um we also if you notice you know even yesterday right we sold off throughout the day and we had the cpi data but then you know later in the afternoon we kind of uh, went up higher so this is this is institutional buying guys there's a wall street buying into the close between 12 and 3 p.m they're continuing to kind of accumulate back in here at least that's kind of how i see it then you look at the nasdaq as well which only dipped a little bit it was the strongest of them all up about almost a percent and then on the s p 500 um on the nasdaq 100 it was 77 basis points so a little bit less than the nasdaq composite but the big gainers of the day were the small caps your s p 600 you can see um you know close to one percent 98 basis points so you know pretty good moves across the board with consumer discretionary kind of leading um communication services you have some industrials and 
and then you you have energy healthcare consumer staple stores the end here which are uh, more of a uh, defensive uh, sector so a pretty pretty good day we had some decent earning reports in the afternoon uh, in some of these kind of high beta stocks they've been kind of flying here in the after hours i'm curious how we're going to open tomorrow but we've been having a couple of strong daily closes and i think this market it's uh it's getting ready to move much higher uh, if you take a look at bonds in here, we had just a little bit of a move higher in yields, but nothing uh, serious enough to derail, um, you know, this kind of bullishness that we have in the market. Um, you know, we also have the dollar up today, right, which is a little bit of a strange thing, especially, uh, you know, when you're looking at some of these buying that's taking place. I think dollar is in a little bit of a correction, so it should not influence the larger trend much. And then uh, commodities were down across the board from the commodity complex here, DBC, along with gold, which should continue to be in a bearish outlook until about summer, followed by silver. Um, you know, natural gas here continues to drop, but it did not make a new low. Uh, I'm still having long positions in here, and I'm going to try to stay long all the way until about April in natural gas. We'll see when it starts to kind of base and, and starts over in the month of March, we'll start to get a lot more gains into natural gas. Uh, but that's kind of what I'm watching. And then crypto. Um, you know, pretty bullish in here. If you look at Bitcoin, I mean, look, it's twenty four thousand. Wow, just a just a late rally in here, twenty four thousand two fifty. Amazing. It's ten percent almost, followed by Ethereum and a lot of the others. Um, you know, and I talked about this into the daily report. Um, so let me just kind of jump on that, and then we'll take a look. I have some important charts that I want to show you. So if you go. Um, and then we'll come back to this. So if you go on my daily drip in here, I usually put like a, you know, commentary on the uh, economic data. Uh, we had retail sales today, right? It was about 3%. So, you know, a huge increase in this. The CPI was kind of flat. Tomorrow we're going to get the building permits and PPI. So watch this number tomorrow because that might be a market mover as well at about 7.30 my time. And that's um, 8.30 um, East, Eastern. All right, so retail sale pretty strong in here after a 1.2 uh, uh, consensus. Uh, but anyway, if you look at the S&P futures, this is comments that I make each morning and I try to follow the counts and adjust them if I need to. But basically, you know, we're looking for this 1.2, 1, 1.2 2 into the 61.8. And I'm looking for a break much higher above 4,200 and actually to target the 4,300, which is... I think between 43 and 4400 is the highs from the summer of 2022. That's where I'm thinking this market will go. Uh, some of the counts uh, in here are a little bit more tricky. Uh, I think it's a little in diagonal. I, I'm not super happy with it, but you know we'll adjust it later. I do like this being corrective, this being impulsive, and I had this as an X alternate just in case we were going to break, but it doesn't seem that that's the case. So I think we're going to continue to push higher. Uh, Nasdaq 100 as well in a one two in here, um, and then you have another one too and then you can have this channel and i think we broke through it today and we're probably going to continue to push so i'll update this tomorrow morning Dow futures were pretty much flat and and without a lot of um you know i mean they've, they've made a lot of gains back here from october to december it was the strongest while all the markets were struggling right the value and, and some of the energy in Dow 30 you know, it pushed higher, but you know, there was nothing sustained after that. Right? So we just moved kind of sideways. I think it's a sideways correction in some kind of a flat. And I think it's probably going to break out of here if we can close back. And I will check the charts again. But if we can close back about 34, 400 in here, I think that's a bullish sign. Uh, dollar futures in here. Um, you can look at it and say, I mean, fine, you had a, a pretty decent five wave move in a wave one or a wave A, followed by an impulse in a wave A for now. One, two, three, four, five, either a B wave now or, or, um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe a C wave of a flat up and then a drop again and then go. But I think overall, we're still going to try to go towards this 105.50 in the dollar, um, index. I'll update that tomorrow morning. Gold futures continue to drop in here. Um, we'll eventually get some kind of, um, a pullback in here in ABC, but for right now, I don't want to pick a low. I'm just going to kind of let this unfold lower. Uh, uh, as an alternate, you can have a one, two, one, two in here, and actually they can drop much lower. Um, I'm not necessarily that bearish, right? But, um, you know, it's, it's an option. For right now, I do like this a little bit better. Um, you know, so maybe back into this 1820 support, we're going to get some bounces back in ABC. Uh, silver, you know, similar story. The silver, this, this guy never really confirmed gold's rally. I mean, it tried to push higher, but, um, you know, while gold was moving and it was making new highs, 
Um, Silver did not, and it stopped below the trend line. They faked out the last move up there in a the fifth wave, one, two, three, four, five, and then it was a crash from there because they trapped a bunch of people uh, thinking that this is going to be a breakout, and now you know they're squeezing lower. So uh, here we are on a, on a one-week chart on this declining trend line, and you can see how it's coming back into support. So we might find something here, and then Bitcoin. You know, I said, listen, if you're going to find a fourth wave in, in, in not today, but yesterday um, and even the day prior, if you look at the updates, we looked at this as a five wave move as a C wave of a flat. And, and uh, you know, with with the likelihood of getting into the territory of the fourth wave from a, a smaller degree with the trend line, uh, you know, with the five wave completion, that the chances are increasing that you're probably going to get a bounce out of here. Uh, this is kind of what happened overnight in a one, two, one, two scenario. And then uh, I think I put up on Twitter um, that this is kind of how that looked. And we're already moving above 23,450. So, um, you know, my idea was that. Uh, you know, one, two, one, two on a smaller time frames, and we're probably gonna, gonna push back above those 24 to 60. And, um, you know, it, probably, you know, even higher than that. Let me just kind of check, um, uh, me just check Bitcoin to see kind of where we are right now. If I, if I may for a second, I'm gonna jump quickly back here. So it's, uh, 24 to 60. What was the high there? uh 24 386 uh, i'm not going to do an update on bitcoin but uh yep we overtook that 24 to 62 high so i don't think we have a five wave completion on bitcoin one two one two i gotta modify this now right because that's much higher um so it's probably going to continue a little bit so i'm just doing this live i haven't had a chance yet to look at it so sorry about that all right, so one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, maybe three. So we're probably going to get now after this move is kind of done, probably going to get a four and a five or four and a five. And, and, you know, then we're probably going to get a pullback and then a continuation. So uh, very interesting. But if it's this is way five and I'm going to, you know, finish up with this. Um, at the moment you broke about this 24 to 60, um, you know, this way five in here, right, could be complete. So at, at any point, this could terminate and you can reverse lower in a much larger correction, right? I don't think that's the case. This looks quite impulsive to be the end of a fifth wave, uh, but we'll definitely watch it. Um, the way I'm kind of doing that is I'm just putting some fibs in here and watching the reversals and see what levels were, were getting tagged. So that's what I'm going to say about in, um, in Bitcoin. So let me jump back uh, to here. But this was basically the idea. I did not expect this to climb, you know, so fast. Wow. Okay. So that's, um, that's pretty good on, um, on Bitcoin. All right. Let's take a look at the macro daily list. Um, this is something I'm watching every single um, afternoon on the video updates as well. Uh, the S&P 500 cleared the trend line, uh, cleared the 20 day, uh, offered support and it, Again, with a nice bullish close at 41.47, accumulation distribution line continuing to push to the upside. So to me, that's a bullish development. We should move higher towards these targets back here at about 4,300. Uh, NASDAQ, I mean, look at the nice three, uh, um, you know, three white candles in here. I think that's, um, that's a pretty bullish formation. It should resume to the upside still. And the targets are back here towards 13,500 uh, for now. But I think we're going to go much higher than that. So that's kind of where we are on the NASDAQ as well after retest of the 20 day. Uh, NASDAQ composite, same story. Uh, you're looking at Dow Jones. That was the close right there a couple of days back came back we're finding support at the 20-day moving average we haven't broken above this but once we do i think that's going to continue to push higher and attack 35,000. so that's your dow jones nice accumulation in here all right let's take a look at the russell um you know pretty good move and you can see how strong this was one percent on iwm just today uh, you know those small caps those kind of higher beta stocks that are in this index um they they really uh, did a number today so you know, based on this, I would expect more of a continuation. Uh, one thing to pay attention, though, we have uh, option expiration on Friday, right? That's the monthly expiration. Every single month, the third Friday of every single month is the monthly expiration options. And those are big contracts. That's that's where everybody, all the institution, uh, you know, retail traders. I mean, those are the most liquid options in the world in the monthly options. You know, people do daily, they do weekly, but the but those monthly ones, uh, you know, are, are where the monies are. So um, the market can move a lot 
because of that. So some of these moves could be, you know, associated with that. Uh, there might be some, a lot of premium that needs to be wiped off. We might get some bearish turns back. Who knows? But just kind of pay attention. We're getting into some, some uh, larger volatility into that Friday, which is uh, here in a couple of days. Uh, look at Bitcoin, right? 24,162. This is not updated yet, but it's uh, looking like it's breaking those levels. So that's pretty good to see. Um, you know, TLT in here pulled back with the yields traveling just slightly higher, about 1.3%, 377 on the yields. We don't want the yields to go higher too much and too aggressive. Otherwise, they're going to temper the growth of the stocks. Uh, US dollar just kind of flat. Again, just looking for another leg higher back towards maybe retest this 200 day moving average guys 10550 to 106 um, before we start to maybe turn back to the downside uh, here is gold below its 50 day moving average coming into some uh, visible support on this daily time frames right there right that's I mean, I don't have to, to draw too many lines, but it's just kind of right there, right? Uh, anywhere between 1820 to 1830, I think we're going to find some bids in gold. And then uh, copper pushing down a little bit on here, nothing much. Uh, WTIC not wanting to do a whole lot, so I don't want to talk about that. Uh, EFAM, you know, still pretty bullish, accumulating and continuing with an upturn. But if the dollar corrects, this one is just going to be slightly uh, stable. And then volatility index 1823 back towards the lows they pushed higher into the cpi event and now we're coming back we need to establish uh, uh vix below 18 and i think below 18 or below 17 that's probably going to fuel a lot of bullishness um, overall into the market so that's my overall review of um, the macro daily in here and i want to show you a couple of important charts i'm going to show you because I, I i've made some comments on twitter and um you know and they're right here um, you know, I don't know if they were kind of, uh, um, you know, I wanted to sound too aggressive in here, but basically, you know, what I, what I wanted to say is that, um, where are you? Uh, oh, here are some trades that would open the other day in the pro room, right? Uh, Carvana. I mean, awesome move even today. We entry at the 137. I think it's close to 12. Um, you know, this is a sharp one. It's moving fast. Be very careful. I opened some longs in T triple Q. This is a triple leverage QQQ. Uh, because I'm thinking we're going to continue to push higher and then a little bit long on JetBlue because, you know, some interesting formation in there. There's a lot more trades into the trade alerts, but, uh, you know, these are some of the ones that we've done. Uh, so, um, you know, one of the things is, um, that I think, you know, as, as you're continuing to practice Elliott Wave and, and this is, you know, for new and older practitioners, practitioners of, of the wave principle, um, you know, counts are awesome and they say, they tell us a lot of things, right? But there's sometimes they're confusing and, and, you know, something could be a third wave, it could be a B wave or a C wave, uh, it could be an X wave, right? So we always kind of have these questions in our mind, like, what is it? You know, what's going on in here? And sometimes our bias, um, you know, kind of clouds our judgment a little bit. And, and, you know, I think that's when we, especially when we have kind of confusing counts, we need help from the market. And uh, sometimes we're justifying our counts, you know, by finding the information that we wanted to see in, uh, you know, underneath the surface in some of these markets. And I'm trying to stay as objective as possible. Sometimes I'm not, but I'm trying to every single day, I try to get better and try to be objective on my analysis and look at the market for what it is. And what I'm seeing right now is that underneath the surface, there's a lot of strength in all these stocks. If I look at breath, if I look at sentiment, I look at volatility, right? All this stuff uh, tells me that there's a pretty bullish picture. And and that's what I wanted to say in here, right? So if, if you're, all you're doing is counting ways, I think you're doing it wrong. Uh, uh, stocks drive the markets and, and you need to study the market breath and volatility because it will help you see um, you know, the wave structure clearly uh, or much more clearer and then will give you confidence in your primary outlooks, right? So this is what I look at. At 52-week highs, I look at advances versus declines, accumulation versus distribution, volume on up days, volume on down days. And I have all of those in a bunch of this important chart list that I go through as I'm kind of trying to come up with the best count possible. And, and that's that, that, you know, I think that helps a lot. Um, so again, you know, 71% of the stocks, they're above their 50 days. 60% are above their 200 day. Um, you know, so it's, it's just a couple of things that I think matter. And so here, here they are. Um, basically stocks above their 200 day moving average, 70 to 20. Now we've had some rallies before, right? So we've had some sharp rallies on this bear market, but we were only able to get to 50%. 
you know, uh, um, some sharp rallies in here as we were declining back to 75, then dropped, then back to 60, then dropped to almost zero, 10 to 15 percent. Um, and this is the first time that, I mean, since October, that we're getting sustained growth into this market. A lot of stocks now are above their 200 day moving average. And when they are, um, you know, most of the institutions, uh, most of the Wall Street firms are looking at that with a bullish eye. They don't want to fight trends. Right. So if you're above the 200 day, you're staying bullish. If you're below, you can have a bearish view. Um, consumer discretionary sector in here, right? Versus the staples is pushing to the upside. Um, you know, that's a pretty positive sign. Uh, growth versus value, you know, it's still kind of flat, which means that we're getting, um, uh, participation from both sides of the market, from both the growth and both the value. It's not a rally in here that's just kind of keep being carried necessarily by growth. There's a lot of stocks, uh, you know, in the other indices, not necessarily just in the NASDAQ that are carrying this market, uh, you know, slightly higher in here. And, uh, um, you know, but that's the ratio in here. I mean, look, it's been basically destroyed, um, you know, during the 2022 market. Look at the high beta. So these are all the high flyer, the, the you know, the, the strong, not the strong stocks, but some of the, the more riskier aspects of the market. Eh? It's getting a huge rally. It's getting a huge boost. And, and that was because a lot of these were killed during the bear market. Uh, momentum factor in here, it's kind of flat. Um, you know, S&P 500 versus the mid caps, right? The mid caps outperforming the S&P 500 since uh, the summer of last year. Right. If you're in the mid caps and you're in the small caps, you outperform the S&P 500 by a lot. Uh, look at that. Look at the trend. Uh, and this seems to continue. Uh, looking at the equal index versus the large index, you know, if you were equal weighted, you've done much better than being in the, you know, some of those large cap stocks that have, uh, you know, falling out of favor and they seem to be coming back. So I'm expecting now that, you know, this will probably turn back to the downside. And then, you know, the S&P 500 are outperforming treasury bonds, TLT, people want to be in stocks and not necessarily in bonds. So that's an important one that I always watch. Uh, I always look at, um, you know, some of these, um, let's say sentiment, uh, uh, charts, like for example, you know, AAII, right? Is the first time that people are starting to get, you know, more on the bullish train after we've had, you know, 2022 of extreme bearishness. And I doubt that this is just going to be a little blip on the map and then you're going to reverse back to red. I think that once you're getting back to bullish, you're probably going to get at least, you know, a few months, if not more of this being on the positive side. Um, also, if you're looking at the association of active investment managers, you know, they're about 85% invested. You know, there's a lot of money coming into the market. Um, you know, they've been pretty defensive. I mean, obviously during the bear market, uh, you've hit almost zero in, in investment, right? Right at the bottom of the market, there was a contrary signal. Um, and, and it's been, uh, rising, um, you know, ever since these lows, right? So we're getting uh, a lot of the money that was probably just kind of staying on the sidelines. And I would not necessarily look at this as a, um, you know, as a bearish indicator, right? I don't think you want to fade this. Um, you know, you pro first of all, you got to get to much bigger extremes in this. Um, and then, you know, they have to be sustained for a while and then you get some deterioration. Uh, Rydex flows from risk to safety. They're, they're basically getting reduced in here as well. So that's another, um, you know, one that I watch and then I watch a bunch of the call put ratio stuff like that. I'm not going to get into it right now. Okay. So now, uh, the last one in here, it's, and I think this is important. It's, um, uh, the list of new highs versus new lows. And, and it's a very basic chart. Um, I probably showed it before. If you're new, um, you know, I'll go through it one more time. Uh, right here, it shows the New York Stock Exchange common stock. Um, you know, this kind of top panel in here. Then you have the S&P, then you have the NASDAQ, and then you have the Dow Jones at the bottom. Right. So now look how much more green we're getting since the beginning of 2023. But not only that, watch since October, November of last year that we were starting to get with the exception of the NASDAQ, right? A lot of these in the New York Stock Exchange and the S&P, you're starting to get a bunch more 52 week highs versus 52 week lows that you've had during the bear market. I mean, look at the bear market, right? You're looking uh, during 2022 and look how much red, I mean, deterioration back here and then a bunch of red, just a bunch of red. So stocks were just getting demolished and we've had improvements since then and we're continuing to do so in 2023. Look at the New York Stock Exchange common stock in here, right? Almost green 
just 52 week highs, 52 week highs. Now, you know, I can go through that list and show you which stocks those are because I'm kind of watching it every single day. I put a list on it. Sometimes they're 130, sometimes they're 100, sometimes they're 80, right? But they're much more than 52 week lows. Uh, and that's a bullish sign. Then you look at the S&P 500 as well, you know, a couple of small real red ones here, you know, but they continue to kind of push them higher. Uh, on the NASDAQ, you know, quite impressive that, you know, you've had, uh, uh, you know, a decent number every single day between 86 and 150 stocks are making new 52 highs. And then Dow Jones in here has been kind of flat here for the month of February with the movement that happened in the NASDAQ and the S&P, you know, but this one, you know, when it had that major rally, look at the 52 week highs that all those stocks in the Dow were making. So I look at that. Um, as a measure of breadth, strength, stocks, you know, what's happening underneath the market, underneath the hood. Um, and then you have a bullish crossover here between the 50 and the 200. So based on this, you know, I want to stay bullish, um, you know, until the market starts to deteriorate and we're starting to crack back below some of these levels. If you're breaking below 3,800, if you're seeing deterioration in the stocks, right, then, um, you know, you can flip back to some bullish counts until then, um, you know, I think you're missing a big part of the picture if you're not looking at this. Um, and, you know, everybody's got their own sources and things that they watch. Um, but what better source to have than kind of what's happening in the actual stocks in the market, in the S&P 500, in the Dow, in the NASDAQ, in the Russell, um, you know, in this kind of larger, uh, larger indices. So, um, you know, that's my clue. And, um, you know, I'll leave it at that. I am your host, The Cowboy. This is Elliot Wave Cafe. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.